Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here, welcome back to another Counterside video. Alright, today's video we're going to talk about Lee Suyeon, which is something that I'm really excited about and I know a lot of you guys are as well. And if you guys are not aware, she is the perfect direct counter to awaken Nayubin. And we're going to talk about her kits, her skills, and why she is so strong and so sought after by a lot of top PvP players. Now, first things first, I find that it doesn't make sense for them to release Awaken Nayubin after Awaken Lee Suyun, right? Because it just doesn't make sense. She is the perfect and I think the strongest counter to Awaken Nayubin possibly. So having her is most likely going to make Awaken Nayubin's existence more cumbersome. Like in terms of her skills, we're going to talk about it shortly, but you can tell it's the direct counter to someone like Awaken Nayubin. But the thing is, that's what happened in KR server though. They did release her immediately after Awaken Heal Day and Awaken Yomina. She's a third Awakening character to be released. But in our server, we have Awaken Heal Day, we have Awaken Yomina, and then they release Awaken Yuna afterwards. And now we have Awaken Nayubin. Now, does it make sense for Awaken Lee Suyeon to be next? I have no idea because, you know, releasing a direct counter to a character seems to be the thing in C server, right? Because we have Sigma, and then one week after, we have Awaken Nayubin. So, if that's the trend, that they are releasing a counter to the current unit that we have so quickly, like one week after, I'm guessing she is going to be the next awakening. You know, it could be anyone, but I'm speculating that she should be the next unit to come. Now, full disclaimer, I do intend to go all in on her, right? So when I pull on my Awaken Nayubin, I wasn't expecting to get Awaken Nayubin at all. Like, I was just like stacking pity for her if she was to come next because I know that she's the character that I really want for someone that plays PvP a lot and she's also going to be decently good in PvE as well. So let's talk about kits, let's talk about skills, Let's jump into stats. She is not that impressive stats wise. Alright, you can see 32,000 HP. Uh, as a ranger though, she is going to be really high up there because most rangers, if you look at something like Carl Wong, if you look at Gayun, so Carl Wong has about 26,000 HP. Gayun has about 37,000 HP. Shinja has about 29,000. So you can see she's like somewhere in between. She's not exactly Gayun's level in terms of HP, but she is pretty high up there at 32,000 alongside with 6.3k attack which is quite decent and the rest of the stats are pretty subpar except for the evasion for a ranger she has a pretty decent high evasion right there at almost 1000 which is not bad actually all right so let's jump into practice mode show you guys what lee suyeon is capable of now first things first lee suyeon has one of the if not the coolest entrance looking animation let me show it to you guys the moment she enters the battlefield look at that dash it felt so impactful, all right? And she is the only flying Awaken unit thus far, obviously. And you can obviously tell from a couple of things what she's able to do. But let me deploy some enemies to show you guys one of her greatest strengths. All right, so let me turn the AI on. So this, this uh, monster move towards us a little bit closer. So let me try and move her next, next to them. And I can show you guys what she can do when the enemy is close to them. Do you guys notice she used her sword to swing them away? So that is actually part of her basic skill. So her basic skill, what she's doing right now, is this particular skill, not this one, this is a special. She's able to deal AOE damage to two enemies, two valid hits, she fires a blaster, and whenever enemy goes close to her, she will deal 20% of their current HP in Gauntlet. All right, this is like a special skill in Gauntlet basically. So if this skill is skill up to level five, the targets hit by that melee damage range attack will basically have their recovery amount minus 100%. All right, so that means they cannot be healed at all for 20 seconds if they got hit by that skill. So keep in mind that that is only a skill that will target air units if an air unit gets close to her. So currently we only have Rosaria, maybe Sparrow, maybe Woodpecker. Those are the few units that will end like the helicopter, buzzard, those few, but those are range. Like there's not really much units that can get close to her. There's no melee air units yet as far as I'm concerned, except for in PvE. Now let's talk about the passive skill. This is what makes her super strong, all right? If you guys don't know what this does, be prepared, all right? Look at how long this is in terms of the description. First things first, when you deploy her in the battlefield, she does damage to all units. Yes, let that sink in for a minute. All units. It doesn't matter where they are. Air, ground, heaven, earth. When she is deployed, everyone on the battlefield will get 
damaged by her entrance. That is how crazy it is. Alright, so there are ground units here, there are air units here. Let me try and deploy her again. Can you guys see? The dash does damage to everyone. And it's a pretty decent amount of damage as well. 10,000. 10,000 to this ground unit. Which is insane. Alright, so it's a lot of damage by the way. It's almost similar to Awaken Yomina's entrance, right? When, like when A Yomina goes in, she does this first explosion right here. And even that explosion doesn't deal as much. Uh, usually A Yomina's explosion, the, which is the second one which comes from the special skill right here, that is the one that is strong. The first explosion that she goes in with, which is the slide right here, this particular one, boom, you can see it deals way less than her special skill for sure. So she has that pretty similar in terms of the effect, whereas hers actually affects every single enemy on the field, as opposed to Aeomina's one only affects in that selected area. That particular entrance where she enters right here actually deals more damage to the air units compared to the ground units, because in Gauntlet, specifically, the air units are going to receive 33% of their current HP in terms of damage, which is insane. Alright, so it kills a lot of air units. If you have Rosaria, a lot of people have been saying that she is the direct counter to Rosaria and a few other air units. And I think that's true. Alright, this is where it gets interesting. When she's present on the field, her passive skill grants hit stun immunity. Alright, talking about hit stun, not stun right here. Hit stun is basically knockback stuff like that, like from Rosara's pushback skill or from Cindy's stun lock. Those are hit stuns. So hit stun immunity from special attacks and lower to all non-awakened counter ranger units in the tip. And I'm not done yet. What makes her really strong is not that particular skill, but what she is able to achieve at level 5. At level 5 of this passive skill, it also gives Every single counter rangers, non-awakened, it has to be non-awakened, non-awakened counter rangers, 30% skill haste, as long as she is alive. That is why she is the perfect Nayubin counter. Because Nayubin is weak against rangers, being a defender, you know, she get that uh, role advantage, disadvantage rather. Number two, Nayubin has that minus 30% skill haste, whereas Seoyun will give 30% skill haste to all rangers, counter rangers, they are non awakened. But it works very well for Carl Wong, Gayun, Rosaria, any counter rangers that you can name. It will increase their skill haste by 30%. Oh, have I mentioned that she is going to be the first awakened unit that is a 5 cost as opposed to 6 cost? In my opinion, she has almost the same impact as Nayubin, but at a 1 cost less. That is something that's really invaluable, being a base 5 cost as opposed to a base 6 cost. And that is going to give her the benefit of. You know, having that one extra cost and is as impactful as other Awakened units as well. She's going to give every other rangers on the battlefield a 30% skill haste. So the idea is just to kill her, right? Like you can try and Elizabeth her. You can try and uh, Rosaria her. But you can't because of her special skill. And that's what makes it so annoying. So every time she uses a special skill, right there, can you see? She gets this shield. So this shield, this barrier will be equivalent of 30% of her max HP and it will last for about 6 seconds. But at skill level 5, she will even gain a 30% damage reduction while the barrier is up. So she is really really tanky, surprisingly. So if you want to kill her, you can't kill her immediately. You have to wait for that 6 seconds, and 6 seconds is a long time, especially in a battle where she just came in with her explosion AoE, whatever, and then she's gonna use a special skill and it's just hard to get rid of her afterwards. So the awakening skill is gonna be equally as annoying. It's gonna give her hit stun immunity from special or lower skills after she used this particular skill right there with this big AoE, mind you. Valid hits is 3. And at level 5 of that skill, she will have 15% attack increased for a couple of seconds, I think 10 seconds or so. So it's really impactful actually, but what makes her strong is probably not the special or the ultimate right here. What makes her strong is going to be the passive. Especially in the higher ranks PvP where that is really really common, having 72% Geyut, having 72% Kalwok. You need to have her, because if you don't have her, the enemy that has her is going to have the extra 30% skill haste on their Kalwok and Geyun. 
Uh, you're gonna lose the battle most of the time. It's going to be just the race of skill haste race again. Back to it. So the biggest question is, should you pull for her? How good is she in PvE? So we know that she's good in PvP, right? In terms of PvE, she is actually not bad. Because she has this ability where she counters air units, that is just something that's invaluable. Especially in some of the danger close stages, you can benefit from her because she's an air unit. She can just counter a lot of other things. And giving a bunch of skill haste to rangers, that part of her actually works in PvE as well, believe it or not. Alright guys, so with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. So let me know what you guys think. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Alright, it's the beginning of September this month and I want to give a big shout out to all the YouTube members for helping support the channel. Appreciate all the contribution. Every single one of the support has been really, really helpful. Thanks again. It's quite a lot of you guys. Ryan Gray, Chase My Back, Anyatifa, Cloud Tuazon, Akira Miku, Chai193, Gemma Rifki, Apoch Success, Muhammad Shahmi, Kill for Fun, Raven Hondo, Elza, Akisa Channel, Z Pro X, Alex is Gaming Now, Saito Z, Lindsay Kitty, Prof Kun, Lish Rock, Rick, Spartaiko, Panda and Zoo, Waifu and Joyer, Josh, Shironiko87, GG Bass, Ashiwi, No There, Blazing15, Pukabon, Your Mom is My Waifu, Mike Brooks, Juan Faras, Echizen, Espada, Chips SX, Richard Zhang, Hendra Chow, Ito, Akuji, Hunam Lee, Alvin Ho, Mazlan Hata, DC and Yes, Troach, Ernesty, Yumi Channel, Rian Septiadi, Alistair, Rido Bikes, Vincent Kahyadi, Kiri Tempest, Samuel, Kaha, Envy, Raikiri Kaziyama, and Woodski. Thank you for supporting the channel.